we'll have to create migrations for our project table. To do that, we will simply um, come here and repeat exactly what we've done before, which is um, I pressed the up arrow key and it showed me the last command I ran. So I'm just going to scroll down here and say this is a project, projects table, and then hit enter. Then it creates the projects table, as you can see by the right here, a new migration file has been created for us. So we'll go into the projects table and um, work out the fields of that projects table. So what are the fields we need in our projects table? First of all, we need a project name, and it's going to be a string. So we'll say project name. The project will have a name and then um, it's going to have a description to uh, table then uh, long text long text then description just like we had in the in the company's table just like we had here but then the projects table might have need other um, other things we can just say project status whether it's completed or um, we can just say project status or we can leave it out for now just to keep it simple the project will belong to a certain company because a project belongs to a company and the project has to belong to a certain user so we will add a table integer like I said all these things I'm getting is actually here as you can see there's integer you understand so we're gonna have an integer and uh, we will call it um, company ID company ID so when you want to reference an external table or a foreign key make sure that the table you're referencing uh, has to be in small letter but the actual name of the table must be in capitals like capital letter okay so um we're gonna do the same thing for user because it has to belong to a certain user and then we're gonna do this same thing for the company's table because every company has to belong to a certain user that's um, a user has to create a company so we need to track the user that created the company this time stamps here simply creates the the time it's the table was created and the time it was updated so uh, laravel adds it automatically for us now we have had this we have to tell it that these two things are foreign keys uh, there's a way to do it in laravel without, which i will show you right now so um since these two guys are integers let us make them unsigned so uh, you have unsigned integer the same thing with what we have here unsigned signed so we're just gonna go to company's table and make sure that the user ID there is unsigned. So because uh, it's actually a foreign key, now we're going to enter the constraints. We're gonna tell it that actually this user ID references the ID on the user's table. So this is how we will do it. We'll just add this and tell it this. Uh, the, this is a foreign key that references the ID field in the user's table. So if it goes to the user's table, and this is the ID field that is referencing. So it's so cool. So we'll go back to this and do the same thing for projects. So project user ID references this, and then company ID references uh, the ID on the company. So we say company ID. This company ID references the ID on the company's table. So it's a company's table. So this is super cool. We've done. Uh, the migrations for at least two of our uh, projects so we have the description we have the name of the company id and the user id then the time it was created is there any other thing we need to add to our projects okay um i think the description will pretty much bear everything one other thing we could just do is to actually add a link to any specific materials for the project but i think uh for our, our mvp this fields just uh does the justice so we're going to have to work down and create other uh, migrations we need and then see in the next video what as we create the tasks migration all right